How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be finishing up with the Craftsman Snowblower video series that I've been doing. This is going to be part four and will likely be the last video of this season. Whether I'm gonna to get to use this snowblower or not will all depend on the weather. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, when I get this outside, I'm going to be filming the adjustment of the RPM. I'm going to be using a set of 45 degree needle nose pliers here to make my adjustments for the high RPM as well as the low RPM. And then to track where my RPM is, I'm using this single cylinder wireless tachometer that I got from Stens. And basically you just uh, hold this thing on and this goes to the spark plug, which on this engine, the spark plug's way down in there. So this just goes to the spark plug lead. And essentially whenever the engine's ignition module is producing electrical current, this detects that and then tells you how many times that happens per minute because you have to remember that on the flywheel, there's going to be a magnet on the outside. And every time that magnet passes the ignition module, electrical current is then supplied to the spark plug. And that's what this picks up on. Check it out guys, got the video on the TV there. So my fuel shutoff valve conversion on the 1350 there is complete, but little change of course, I'm not going to use the 1350 tank because it is a little awkward. I'm going to use my little test tank. This is a much better setup for what I need. I think I'm gonna just clamp this to somewhere on the snowblower's handles, and then I can just put a little bit of fuel in there. Once again, fuel shutoff valve, little fuel filter. I can just pop that on. I don't need to worry about a clamp, and that should do just to set me up and get me running so I can test to make sure that the alternator is working as well as set the RPM. So I think this is how I'm gonna set it up. I've jammed the metal bracket there to the front of the engine, a pair of locking pliers to hold that in place. It seems like it's not going anywhere. The tank still is gonna vibrate a bit, but I know that's not ideal, having my fuel line go over top of my muffler, but I think it should be okay. Then I could shut the fuel off and uh, run out the rest of the fuel if I want. And then the only thing I haven't mentioned is I don't know where my high RPM is gonna be set. So I think as soon as I fire this up, regardless of whether it seems to be running at a higher RPM or not, I think I'm going to throttle it down just so that there's no tension on the high side there. And I'll just let it run on the idle because I haven't adjusted this at all. So for the most part, it should be close enough to 1750. Fuel is on, no leaks. I'm ready to take this thing outside, fire it up. See if we can get this thing to prime. Oh, I hear fuel. Choke on, throttle is up. See if she'll start.
All right, so this thing didn't want to idle down much more under 2,000 RPM, which is fine. Normally they recommend 1750 and 3750, but 2,000 RPM should be just fine for the low end. It was running nice and smooth as you heard. And then as for the top end there, you guys saw me adjusting that little tab for the high idle spring. I set it to about 3650, which I know the manufacturer did recommend 3750 no load and then 3600 RPM load. But I've been doing a little bit of research on these 20M engines and from what I could see, some sites do recommend 3600 RPM without a load. So that would be 150 RPM less. So I set it to about 3650, that should be good enough. I don't wanna over rev this thing too much because at the end of the day, this thing didn't cost me anything really. And I'm just assembling this snowblower to three broken ones essentially. So I know this thing starts first pull, it runs good. I'll have to start doing some checking. I don't even know if my stator alternator has output at the alternator. So I'll probably fire this thing up again, unplug this and start probing to check to make sure I'm getting alternating current there. If I'm not, then the cover's gotta come back off again and I will swap out the alternator for one that I wanna upgrade to. However, at the moment it's on back order. All right, so the good news is my heated hand grips here are working. They do take a while to warm up, but at least I know that the alternator has AC output. You saw it about 12 volts at 3650 RPM there. And then I believe it went down to about seven volts at low RPM, which was about 2000 RPM. So because the heated hand grips work and the alternator works, that means that the wiring and everything else is good. Alternator's good. Could just be a burnt out, incandescent halogen bulb there. I can swap that out no problem. And I think I have some replacement bulbs in stock. Okay, so snowblower's back in the shop. A couple things. Muffler's toasty, but I'm not gonna burn myself. So that's awesome. I'm going to diagnose the headlight now. If I pull the bulb and test the bulb directly and it doesn't work, then it's a burnt out bulb. If the bulb works, then it's a wiring issue. All right, so I'm over here on the workbench. DC 12 volt battery pack, lithium ion, little booster there. Black to black on my Lang test leads. And uh, of course, got that hooked up and no light. So halogen bulb, no good. We're gonna replace that right now. So I have a halogen bulb here that does not work. We've tested it direct. So I'm assuming the wiring is fine because the bulb doesn't work. Now, this is an 881 bulb. It's worn off on the backside. They normally all are on these snowblowers, but you can go out and buy a replacement 881 if you want. I don't have to because on the rusted out snowblower, I sold it, but I kept the headlight housing. Why did I do that? Because I wanted the wiring harness. I didn't really care about the housing itself, but I pulled that out with the wiring harness, unplugged the wire here. This is a black wire, but this is the positive. And then the white one is the ground, but check it out. It has the same 881 bulb. So let's test it, see if this one works. Okay, so I hooked this up off camera, check it out. Tons of light coming out of that thing. This light bulb will literally plug into that housing or I could just use that housing, it doesn't really matter, but halogen bulb works perfectly fine. All right, so I got the new halogen bulb installed there. As we saw, we tested it direct. It worked perfectly fine. So it was not a wiring issue. It was just a burnt out bulb. Also, I swapped over the housing. The original one was a lighter gray in the darker plastic on this one. This one actually matches up better and that came off the other one. Looks a little nicer to me. 
My heated hand grips also worked, so I did get lucky because when I originally purchased this machine, I had no idea whether they worked or not. You guys saw me using the infrared thermometer there to basically gauge the temperature of the heated hand grip itself. And after leaving it running for a little while, I believe they got up to about 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So they don't get super hot, but they do get warm enough to prevent your hands from getting cold. So even if you're wearing a glove, it's nice to just have something warm to hold on to instead of just a cold handle. Check that out, guys. It's about as factory as you can get. Now the only thing I want to recommend here is you watch how far down on the fuel inlet you push the fuel line because they give you a ton of room and if you install the fuel line too far down you'll actually have interference issues with the throttle and it will rub on the bottom of your fuel line. So you just want to make sure that isn't going to rub and then we can reassemble our cover and that pretty much wraps up the engine. Other than that, I ended up installing two brand new belts. Once again, I didn't want to include that in the video series because I do have a separate video covering how to remove and install belts on a snowblower that's very similar to this. So this thing is pretty much completely done. We adjusted the plastic skid shoes at the bottom there. I figured might as well use up the polymer ones that are there already installed on the machine. Again, they're reversible, so we just flip them over and I can still get some life out of them. Apart from that, guys, I'm super happy to have this snowblower finished up. Not only did I not spend any money, so I haven't lost a dollar, I actually profited. So what I'm gonna do is take you through all of the equipment that we've purchased and sold, as well as all the parts that we've sold off of the other engines, and I'll pretty much give you guys a final tally of what we've made in profit after all of this has been done. So I got my little notepad here. I didn't wanna do a whole bunch of infographics. Everything started off with that Troy Built 28 inch that I purchased for $150 there. So you guys are gonna see on the right, I'm down $150. Now it took you know a few years, but I ended up keeping the 1450 off of that, that was blown up. And I sold just the chassis of that Troy Built for $150. So I broke even, you can see back to zero. Then I ended up buying that 135027 and that cost me $100. Now we ended up taking the engine off of that and we held on to that for a little while. So we're down $100 at this point. I was able to sell a fuel tank off of one of the engines, I think it was one of the 1450s, for $150. So you guys can see I already got my 100 back and I'm now up $50 by selling some of these parts that we had. Another one of my customers had a cracked fuel cap, so we sold him a fuel cap for $14.50. So we're up $64.50 at this point. You guys can see that the hanging on to these engines is going to prove to be quite profitable. One of my other customers had a cracked plastic access panel on the bottom there. I was able to sell that for $30, so we're now up $94.50. We sold a chute control cable for $30. So I'm up $124.50. And I ended up buying the new belts for this machine. So that was at my cost, which was $20.99 and $17.99, basically about $39 there. So I'm now up $85.50 because I had to take that off of my previous total to purchase those belts. I then sold a shift cable. I'm not sure what that was, but I did have it written down. So I'm now up $110.50. Then we sold the 135027 after I had taken the wiring harness for the headlight off of it and uh, whatever parts we needed for that. And I sold just the chassis of that 135027 for $150. Again, it had a good auger housing. My customer that purchased it needed the whole auger housing because he warped his impeller, but this thing had you know good tires and wheels and there was all kinds of good parts that you could scavenge off of that one. So with the sale of that, I'm now up $260.50, but we're not done there guys because all of these Briggs & Stratton engines that I've had, so I have the 1350 and then the two 1450s, they all had 
electric starters on them and every single one of them worked, including the one that's on this engine. I know I didn't include it in the video, but I can assure you it does work. And the part number for that starter is a Briggs & Stratton 795909. We sold that for $250 as a used starter because those list, I'll put an infographic up on screen for over $400. And you guys can see my cost, I believe was like 383. So just to get rid of that thing, we sold it for $250 cash. And you guys can see our total profit off of this video series so far is $510.50. And I have a mint condition Craftsman 27 inch with a running 1350 starts first pull my heated hand grips work my headlight now works it's got brand new belts the whole thing's pretty much been redone everything's been fully serviced and greased and even if i don't get to use it this season i'm going to be super excited to have this for next winter's season so even though i have a fully working snowblower and i'm up over 500 dollars, i still have a whole bunch of other parts like I said, if somebody comes in with a cracked fuel tank, these things list, I believe, for like 175 or 185 That's a quick $100, $150. If somebody needs a recoil, there's money in that. We also have the other starter. A lot of people, they break these little tabs off. What happens is they leave the cord plugged into the starter, and then they wrap the cord around their handlebars. I do not recommend that. What ends up happening is the connection sees, and when they go to remove that female extension cord plug from here, sometimes it can rip out one of the flat leads there, which is your negative or positive. Now this one's your ground, and you guys can see just how loose this one is. These are super common to get pulled right out, but you can still use your electric starter with either of the two flats without this one. What ends up happening though, if one of these breaks off, your electric starter simply won't work because it won't be getting electrical current. So that's why in my previous video, I showed you guys putting dielectric grease all over these connectors to ensure that the plug slides in and out nice and freely and that there is no pulling force applied to these prongs. That is a quick 250 bucks for me right there. Again, I have spare alternators now. So if I ever get a customer that comes in and their headlight doesn't work because there is no current coming from their stator, I can just swap those over. Again, I have carburetors. I don't know where the other one was off of the other engine, but I know I have it. These things can net me a little bit of money. And again, guys, I have a whole box full spare mufflers and all kinds of the plastic shrouds and just all kinds of good little parts that I can use for my own machine if I ever break apart. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video series on the snowblower. The only thing I wanted to show you guys is that I was planning on hooking up a big LED bar light. That is a nice 18 watt LED floodlight there. However, we have to keep in mind that the alternator or the stator is putting out alternating current and LED lights do not like alternating current. So I ended up picking up one of these. This is a voltage rectifier regulator with a capacitor. I'm gonna be getting into what this does and why you need this specific one to properly hook up a LED light bar onto your snowblower. And the cool thing about this is it has a single yellow input wire with the bullet connector there. And because this snowblower has this little adapter with the bullet connector here, I can literally just plug in the yellow to that output there. And then I would have a red output wire that I can hook up to my LED light, run the ground back to the same spot on the flywheel cover bolt right there. And I will have a nice LED light that would illuminate as soon as you started up the engine, similar to the factory halogen. However, I do have another switch on order, but it's on back order right now. And I was thinking about putting the other switch right here. So there is room underneath this. So I was planning on just cutting a little notch into here, putting a switch, and then I could run the positive wire to one side of the switch, hook that up to the positive on the headlight, mount the headlight pretty much anywhere that I wanted to. And then I would have a nice bright LED bar light that I would be able to run off of a switch similar to my heated hand grips and everything would look 100% factory. 
As I mentioned though, we're already into March and with the seasons changing, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to even use this thing this winter season. So whether or not I do that LED bar light video this season or next season, you guys will see it at some point on the channel. You might just have to wait a little bit longer for that one because that switch is on back order and I did wanna make everything look factory because you guys know that I have a thing about trying to make everything look nice, factory, clean install. So I will be doing a video on these in the future. You'll just have to stay tuned for that. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video and wrap up this video series on this Craftsman snowblower here that I got a fantastic deal on. I have a mint condition Craftsman snowblower, 27 inch, so it gets me a nice big clearing cut for this driveway that I have. And even though I'm down one foot pound of torque, not only was the engine free, it actually ended up making me some money. If you guys enjoyed this video series, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.